Hi guys, quick tutorial here on how to import LODs for the skeletal meshes in Unreal Engine 4. So, first thing I did for this was I went to the Autodesk character generator, made my own character, and then downloaded a crowd resolution low, medium, and high poly version of the model, and then opened that up in Max, and I've got these four here. So the first thing I need to do is import the base LOD which is the highest poly one and as you'll notice here these are all named identically which is because Unreal Engine won't, won't import any additional LODs unless these all have the same name. It's a bit annoying but seems to be the only way I can get it working so I'll export these and just call that LOD character and then I'll bring that into Unreal leave this blank so it creates a new skeleton So if we go back to 3ds Max, that's our base LOD and what we're going to do next is import the sort of mid poly version of the model which will be LOD1 and then we'll do the same um for the low poly version and we'll call that LOD2 and finally for the last LOD we will bring in the crowd res version of the model We'll just call that LOD3. So if we go back into Unreal Engine and we'll go to the Skeletal Mesh asset and scroll down to LOD settings and we're going to go to Import LOD Level 1 and double click LOD Level 1. So that's imported su successfully. If you're getting an error message there, just check again that in 3ds Max or whatever 3D modeling software you're using, just make sure that each model you're exporting has the exact same name because otherwise you will probably get an error message when you try and bring it in. And this seems to be the only way I can get this to work. So then back in the skeletal mesh asset here, um, we'll go to LOD1 and we'll put the screen size at 1 so where it's got current screen size here this is the value that will control when it switches to the next LOD down so I'll show you now if I go to auto LOD wireframe um, so at the moment it's displaying LOD0 and as this as we get down to screen size the screen size of one, it should then change to LOD one, which is our next LOD. There we go. So we'll repeat those steps again for the next LODs. Import and we'll give LOD two screen size of point point seven five. And the same for LOD 3. And we'll give LOD 3 a screen size of 0.5. So you can play around with these values and 
make it work so that it is a seamless transition between each of them. So LOD0, LOD1, LOD2, and LOD3. And you can test this as working in the editor here. If you go to level of detail, coloration, mesh LODs, you got the white LOD, which is LOD0, then it will turn red, LOD1, then it will go green, and then blue for the last LODs. And another cool thing you can do with the LODs, the skeletal mesh LODs, is you can remove bones in the animation. So I will import an animation And if you're using version 4.19 onwards, you've got the option here to preview an animation in the Skeletal Mesh Editor. So if we look at the skeleton, what we're going to do is remove the bones for the right and left hand. And because in the hierarchy you've got all of these bones as well, um, that means that these will all be removed as well. So it should help save on performance. So if we go to LOD, we'll test this on LOD3. Uh, bones to remove. We'll remove the left hand and the and the right hand. So if we go to auto LED here, you see in the animation here he's sort of doing a little fist pump. So there's animation data for the hand and all of the finger bones as well. Um, but if we go to LOD3, and oh, before we see any change, we need to hit reapply removed bones. So now you see that that fist pump part of the animation isn't there because the animation data for those bones has been removed for this LOD. So this is a helpful way of optimizing the skeletal meshes because you probably won't even notice it when you're at this distance here. So he's he's doing that part of the animation and if we get closer You see, there you go, he's doing the fist pump. And if we get further back, you'll see in a moment that part of the animation won't be there. So you can do this for whatever bones you want, but that sort of works for this example. Um, and the same as um, normal static mesh LODs, you also have the option to uh, change the materials as well for each LOD. So if you've got um, quite complicated materials that you don't really need to have much detail in at a distance, then you can add them to the material slots here and then set them in the LOD here you can just choose which material you want for that LOD and that's about it